All right, so hello everyone, Lieutenant Aaron Abreu here, and welcome to our session for fiscal year 2022. I think it's this is our video, first video for this fiscal year. It's a new year for us military folks. I'm super excited because I have amazing selectees from the HCA community here tonight. Don't worry, for the non-HCAs, uh, we will have the other specialties in the next few episodes. Um, I know I may be biased because I'm healthcare administrator, so I probably started that way. But uh, we have a very diverse group uh, in, the, in here tonight. Uh, without further ado, I'm just going to quickly show them and have them introduce themselves real quick, starting with uh, Senior Chief Andrade. Do you want to introduce yourself real quick to the group? Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, what specialty you got selected for. Hey, uh, greetings, everybody. I'm happy to be here. Happy to be Talking to everybody on this side, uh, my name is uh, Senior Chief Andrade. I've been in the Navy for uh, 13 years. Um, I'm a Senior Chief RS type, and um, uh, my uh, specialty is uh, HCA, uh, direct. Sir? Senior, um, how many times did you apply for the program? First time up, sir. This is your first time up. Very nice. Okay, yes, so sir. <laughs> for those in the group, first time up, non Corman rate an RS, so in the supply field. So very, very impressive. So thank you, Senior. Uh, next on the docket is much. we have HM1 Shirley. HM1, would you like to introduce yourself to the group? Uh, HM1, I think you're still muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> We are having a little technical difficulty, but it's okay. This is part of being live. HM1, if you don't mind, I'm going to go real quick to Chief Select Turner real quick. Uh, so Chief Select Turner, if you want to introduce yourself to the group. Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much for the opportunity, sir. Uh, I'm Chief Select Turner, and I've been in the Navy for eight years. And um, as with my name, I'm a selectee right now for Chief. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, this is my second time applying for the program, and I got selected for HCA training for Army Baylor. Yes, sir. Thank you. Select. So... These are individuals. Let's see if HM1 Shirley is back on track. HM1, would you like to try again to introduce yourself to the group? Sure. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm HM1 Shirley. And of course, just doing something fun to shake things up a little bit. That's that's what I do. <laughs> so um, I've been in the Navy for, I hit seven years, October the 14th. Um, and I came active duty from the reserves about two years in. So the last five years since 2017, I've been active duty. Um, I've applied four out of those five years. So this year was my fourth time and I got selected for healthcare admin direct. Awesome. Well, so I, 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 like I said, I just love this group so much right now because it shows varying one rates, right? We have an RS, we have a GSE. And we have an HM, right? So a lot of the questions I get asked right off the bat is like, oh, if I'm not an HM, I'm not going to get selected. Two out of the three people here right now in front of you, if you're watching, are non-HM. So that's number one. Number two, it you know, there's an individual here that submitted first time up, uh, the other one submitted twice, and then the other one submitted four times. So it's really... I personally don't know. There's no, like, secret, oh, how many times do I need to submit? Because, again, there's, like different uh, individuals here with different timelines and i'm a big believer of timing right because i think out of this group i applied if you've watched my video i applied seven times so that's getting told no and like you know almost like you're asking the navy for a date and like no no and like finally they're like okay yes if i said yes right felt bad for me probably but hopefully i didn't disappoint the navy too much just yet 
Um, but without further ado, I want to go uh, the first question a lot of people like to ask, and I get this a lot. Uh, what do you think, uh, and this is probably a very hard question to answer, but I like to put it out front right away. What do you think uh, helped you set yourself apart from the application process? As you know, there's like hundreds of people that apply for this program. But what do you think was that quality that helped yourself apart or uh, and to help you out with this one, uh, it's in your within your person. If you want to share what was in your personal statement as well, because I f I feel like that's what set people apart. So let's start with you, senior chief. Uh, hold on, let me. Add Thank you, here. sir. There you go. I'm good, sir. Thank yeah. you, sir. So, uh, as far as a uh, personal statement, I I realized at one point, thanks to a uh, great mentorship, that. Uh, the statement has to come from the heart. If you don't, if you try to copy and paste somebody else's statement, more than likely it's not going to work. Cause it's going to be, it's the, I believe the board is going to see it. Your mentors are going to see it. The people who uh, sit and appraise you are going to see that your statement is not genuine. It's, it's not, it's not coming from you. Um, I believe my statement was from my heart. And uh, it, 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 I worked um, probably four months, five months to get to uh, the point that uh, I wanted as far as the statement to get it uh, where it needed to be. Um, and it came from different aspects that I had lived throughout my life that led me to become a healthcare administrator. And uh, things that developed me as a, as a senior chief, as a chief, as, an, uh, as a sailor that could be an asset to the ACA community. Over, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I like that you brought that up that, you know, it, it has to come from the heart. And I want to harp on this and I might be repeating myself multiple times because the past few days, I've seen this a lot in the Facebook page of, hey, send me somebody, can somebody send me their package? Although there is not nothing wrong with that. I don't see, you know, I feel that sending some seeing someone's package or, or the application won't really do you any good if you don't know what you're looking for specifically but your application is a testament of you and i think you hit that senior chief it's your experience over there so because there's already a checklist uh, it's the same checklist that everybody's using and it's everything can be found by yourself in your own record so that is your story. And I think I'm glad you like harped on that. And I think we kind of talked over those five months too of like senior chief getting frustrated of like, now that's, I still, this is cookie cutter senior, two cookie cutter, two cookie cutter. And uh, you, you kind of culminated all your experiences together. So thank you for that, uh, uh, sharing that. Uh, H1 Shirley, kind of talk to us about how about you? What set yourself up apart? What do you think set yourself apart from uh, this application process and fourth time? So anything changed? Uh, several things changed. So um, for me personally, um, I have been applying since I've been in E4. And at the rank of E4, I didn't have in their eyes, even though I had much civilian experience, I did not have the naval experience. Um, and the second time I applied, I was in E4. Um, I, and the same thing, I wasn't actually you know, released by the ECM. But what a lot of people kept telling me was like, oh, you're still very junior. We know that you have all this outside experience, but the Navy, you have to show what you've done for the Navy. So I took a break after that second time and I really focused on that. I focused on developing my Naval leadership and Naval knowledge um, while I was doing, and I focused on my master's, completing my master's degree. So uh, when I took that break, I ended up getting mapped to second class and um, I finished my master's. I put in last year right at the tail end, but again, I'm not sure what it was, but I felt like it was a really good package and everybody that looked at it felt like it was pretty good. But I think this time I had just brought in myself so much focusing on leadership and taking these different collaterals, um, things that people didn't want to do and things that everybody did but i just took to the next level i just really honed in on leadership um naval type leadership so i took a good mixture of what i did in the civilian world and everything i've learned 
and then um, tie that into the Navy and conducting myself as a professional at all times, even as an E4, even with the smallest jobs, I did it like it was the biggest job. Um, so I that was important, but I definitely have to echo what Senior Chief said. Um, 1000%, I had, I always work very, very hard on my personal statement. I ensure that I answer the three questions, but I also make sure that the answers come specifically from my heart. Um, they really talk earnestly about what I want to do and what I can contribute. A lot of times when I have read other people's statements, um, just to help, of course, they don't talk about what they can contribute. They forget about that piece. And that's very important. So you can say this happened to me, you know, when I was younger, but you always have to circle back. And I think that's extremely profound when they see how you can tie everything together and put that bow on it. So that is what I think I did. I always focus extremely hard on that statement. A lot of things I just add, you know, you just add your education, you add your new awards, you add these things. But every single time I've had a different, I can just look and I've had a different one and I can see how I've grown as well. Awesome. Thank you, HM1. I like that you harp on that L word, the leadership aspect. And um, when you commission, uh, a lot of senior officers will tell you this. Naval officers are leaders, period. That's it. Um, and you develop yourself. And a lot of people are going to tell themselves, and even I was guilty of this, is I was sailor of the quarter or I have two NAMs. And I have EPs on my evals. Why am I not getting selected? But uh, you are, you know, you have that humility in you that, you know, when you looked mm -hmm. at your previous applications, you told yourself, you know what? I can still grow. There's growth that need that can be done. And you took that, you ask people to help you grow. And I am, a te I can, I'm a witness to this because you were one of my students when I was instructor in HMA yep. school. And yes, you've definitely grown and I'm very impressed and I'm so glad that you're in the wardroom with me now. It's just crazy small name. And you were the person that told me about the program. So he's like, what are you, let me get to know you. We were walking to uh, the student center or past for you. I was walking to there. And you said, let me get to know you a little bit. So what do you have? I know that you're older. You have children. Like, what's going on? I was like, I have my bachelor's degree. He said, what are you doing? You need to make sure that you look up this program. You need to make sure you look up this program. And I did it immediately. And ever since that moment, I knew I knew that it was in my future and that is what I worked towards. That is why I went from the reserves to active duty so that I could do this program. So I'm actually walking and living in my purpose right now because of you. Thank, Thank you. That makes me happy. That's all, that's all I really need. Like I can retire tomorrow. That's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, HM1. We'll talk more, but now let's Sorry. hear from uh, Chief Select Turner. Chief, talk to us about like, your experience. What do you think uh, helped you set yourself apart? You're right. It is a hard question, sir. But <laughs> but I would emphasize three things that I think um, kind of set me apart this time. Uh, just a brief history, since this is my second application. Um, first time, um, you're right. Um, you think that you got it, that you're you're it. You're, you have this all, you got your awards and everything, but that didn't help. I was really heartbroken uh, that first time. Um, as a matter of fact, I thought of not applying again, but that place, consistency plays a very big role in this situation. So that's one uh, consistency. I, I, I made sure that um, I don't stop on my dream, just keep on pursuing and put in an application again. And this time I was... Um, very open. I was true and open as to my personal statement. I really blurted my heart out, not to sound dramatic in my personal statement, but that is me. <laughs> that is me telling the board that this is me and this is my why. As a matter of fact, my mentors, which is you're one of them, <laughs> um, would keep on saying like, why? What is the reason why you want to apply? And I focused on that. As soon as the result came for the last application, I really thought hard on, cause you already know, for, for all you know, you already know the answer. You just need to have to, 
you know, for um, how, how to put it in writing and make sure that you are getting the message across to the board. And lastly, I would want to say um, that this time in my application, because since with my story, um, I already have a master's degree. Um, but my master's degree in healthcare administration is not accredited not doesn't have the accreditation that the navy has so i didn't stop there as a matter of fact i applied for another master's um from school that is uh that has the accreditation and made sure that i put that in my package and that i think of course we don't know uh we know what the board will look like but you really don't know what they are thinking at that point deciding right but i think that tells the board that Oh, she already have a master's, but she is willing to do this again in order to get into the program. And I applied for training still, and I got in for for the um, with the Army Baylor. And um, so that's the those are the things that I think um, actually set me apart. The board members might think otherwise, but that's how I felt. That's different from what I did, and. Um, Lastly, I would, I cannot emphasize more. I cannot really emphasize more the importance of mentors in this journey because um, they make you feel that you're not alone. And in this journey, like everybody's helping out somebody. Um, some people paying it back, some people paying it forward, but that's how it is. And um, I really think uh, this, this right here, what we're doing, um, this touched me. I'm pretty sure it'll touch a lot of um, sailors and aspiring um, MSC um, officers as well. So, yeah, thank you. Wow. Thank you, Chief Select. Uh, and uh, knowing your story, that is very, very true. You know, um, for somebody with already a master's degree and to humble yourself to you know, it's almost like, oh, I got to take some people are like another master's. I would have, I, I know I was like, Navy told me, it's like, yeah, we'll commission you if you get another master's and you already have one. And the right. fact that you had to humble yourself to you know, like, fine, I'll apply for army Baylor. Cause I, I qualify for it. And the application process to army Baylor is another application in itself. So that's yes. a very challenging thing, but I like how you touched on mentorship. Mm -hmm. And this is the purpose for those of you watching if you are that type of person that thinks, you know, I can do this on my own, I don't need anyone. That's true. There are certain individuals, but I will tell you a very, very small number, probably out of sheer luck, in my opinion, will make it without a mentor. But even the most successful people out there, businessmen, politicians, naval leaders have mentors. If you talk to your CEO and XO, if they have a mentor, I will I can almost 99.9% .9 guarantee you to have mentors and the MSC community is all about that. And I can truly speak for the HCAs uh, and the, and within the MSCs. It's I, that's why I fell in love with healthcare administrator. And I knew this was my calling because, you know, we do help each other with that one. So I thank you for those words. And now I'm going to bring everybody back to the screen right here. Right. And for those of you that are watching, uh, H1, H1 Shirley has her kids <laughs> and Chief Select is going through season. Senior Chief Andrade barely got any sleep and is in USS Constitution pushing out new Chief Selects out there. So I really <laughs> appreciate your time, uh, like coming here and showing your face and answering questions. Um, and for those of you that are watching right now, if you have questions, please type it in a comment. I can see it right now and I can relay it to our uh, selects over here. But another question that I do want to ask is, um, when you felt discouraged, right, um, during the application process, what made you go back again? Cause you know, sometimes I know for a fact when I was trying to apply, uh, and I didn't get selected. And I think this is more for H1 Shirley and Chief Select Turner, cause you've applied more than once when you had mm -hmm. that moment of, uh, I gotta apply again. Right. Results came out, you know, everybody's happy on Facebook because you're part of Facebook group. You're seeing everybody got selected and you're clapping for them. But you know, deep inside, <laughs> yes. and we have those individuals in the group right now. 
you know, it's it's just tough, right? It's like a hard pill to swallow. It's bittersweet because it's great because your shipmates made it, but you yourself didn't. So you start doubting yourself. And I'm probably speaking more to self because I was mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? And I'm not going to lie. There were some, there was some instance during the application process, like what, did, what did this dude have? Like, what did they have? Like, I'm curious. I want to see their application and compare myself because I can guarantee like it's almost, I had that attitude. So I just, I'm very curious what the two of you, HM1 and Chief Select, uh, what was going through your head? Let's start with you, uh, HM1. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> just put me on the spot. Well, I have to be quite honest. The first time I applied, I really was not expecting. Um, I was so fresh in the Navy from re from the reserves. I was not expecting um, anything. I got a call from a mentor who's a mentor to this day. Uh, he's retired now, Lieutenant Commander Stanley. Um, I logged in or I checked into um, NMPDC. It's now NMPLDC, but I checked into NMPDC. And you know, when you go and meet everyone and you do your CCDs and you're upstairs and he was the DFA at the time. He asked me everything about me and wanted to know what my goal was. I said, I am here to become a healthcare administration officer. I said, that is the whole reason. Um, some of the backstory is that my mother here, oh, here, oh. Um, she was in the army. <laughs> she was in the army um, and she passed away before she could see her dreams fulfilled. Um, so that was one of the things that I put into my statement uh, because I really, this was really, really a goal for me. So. That being said, he said, go ahead. You can use this one as like your springboard. You get to meet all the people. I'm going to send you to meet these people. I want you to apply. I want you to have the experience. That way, when we're going to pad you up the next time and get you ready, and you should expect to be selected the next time. So that was 2017. I didn't expect. But 2018, I fully, I fully expected to be selected. I was still in E4 at the time. I had... Um, some heavy hitters that were backing me. I had a, a letter of recommendation from Vice Admiral Bono before she retired. I just knew, I, I just knew. Um, so the ECM had denied me because I did a conversion and I had to give them four years before I applied for anything. But I was like, they're not gonna worry about that. I have a letter, you know, I was, just, I was really, I was like, I have a letter from Vice Admiral Bono. I'm not worried about that. They said no. She says, yes, they're going to go with that. I was not selected. I felt very like I didn't know what I was going to do, but I was like, okay, I'm going to take a break and just focus on finishing things up. I I didn't even want to get my master's. You guys talk about that. I didn't even want to. I was like, just send me to training. I, I do not want to get my master's. I don't want to do it. None of that. Um, but I ended up taking that time, like I said. So I really, really expected in 2020, again, I, I was like, I'm gonna get selected for 21. I know I am, I know I am. This is it, I've done everything I need to do, all the checks in the boxes, I've got mapped, I've got my leadership. And that one was the one I was the most crushed on. It, I was the most crushed, because I, I took time off, I focused on building myself up, and I was like despondent. When I did not get selected, I had to go to one of my mentors and I really talked to her and I was like, I didn't get selected for academic year 21 and I don't know if I want to do this anymore. I was like, I could be making so much money on the outside. I have all this experience. <laughs> I was just mad. And she was like, but you told me that this was your calling and this is what you're supposed to do. So what? So take your time, be upset, and then let's figure out what we need to get you to do. And, um, but that one was the worst one. And this year, I have to be quite honest. So I was in the career counselor position and I was taking care of everybody else that I really felt like my package was thrown together. I felt very terrible about this package because in the past I've, I've really poured into everyone. I mean, I poured into my package, but this time I was pouring into everyone else's, everyone else's package, MSCIVP, MESEP, setting up stuff for everybody. And helping them that I was at the end of the, I was like, my stuff. And um, I fully did not expect to be here with you right now. I am still so shocked, 
but now that I'm on the other side, I can see, um, you know, you don't know what the next person is doing. And I tell that to people when they didn't get promoted. So if you look on the selection list, I literally a month ago, I got promoted to H1. And that was off the test and I had to wait. And then a month later, I'm being selected. I am in a state of right now. So the third, the second, the ones in the middle were the absolute worst. But that last one, I was ready to hang it up. And I didn't really think about other people. I just thought about what I could bring and my personal worth. I, I felt um, so bad. But that's why when you, that's why it's important to have mentors, like you said, because those mentors were like, yes, I've been there. I understand what you're going through. There's so many people it's like, you're the top of the top here. But these are people that are top of the top everywhere. And you can't give up on yourself. They're looking at a piece of paper. So we got to make sure we get the best piece of paper. So if you're doing it by yourself, it can be easy to talk yourself out of things. So it is important to have mentors that absolutely believe in you and that see these things in you that you can't see in yourself. So sorry, that was a little bit long. No, that, that's I had four times that's, I applied. No, no it's, it's great. <laughs> it's, a, you know, you have a lot of experience with the application process, but I'm glad you mentioned that. You know, you're being honest because a lot of people are feeling probably the same way. And my mentor, senior chief, Dave Wisk, when I was enlisted, always said like, okay, you, had, you got bad news from the Navy. Cry about it for a day. You only get a day, okay? Tomorrow it's a yeah. new day. So thank you for sharing that, right. HM1. Really appreciate it. Chief Select, talk to us about it. Uh, thank you. Talk to us about a little bit your experience. It, you know, you applied the first time, didn't get accepted. How did that feel and what made you like come back? Yes, sir. Well, like I said earlier, I was very, very heartbroken. I can totally relate to what HM1 said, because I really thought that um, my package, the first time I applied, um, was really strong with all my qualifications and all this thing and all that. But the result, <laughs> when I seen the result, though I understand that not everybody get it the first time, um, well, senior chief is one of the, those that are very lucky to get it the first time. Um, but though I understand that, I really, I'm really hoping, I'm really wanting to to be to see my name to be selected, and to to cut the story short, uh, when I seen that I didn't get um, selected that time, um, of course I was so down, and I'm very fortunate to have mentors to kick me in the, you know and tell me and remind me of the reasons why I am applying in the first place. And also, it is, I don't know if um, somebody else did this, but I really had to look in the mirror <laughs> and um, talk to myself. I was like, how bad do you need this? How bad do you really want this? Uh -huh. So, um, it is a, a literal self-reflection because I'm in front of the mirror. <laughs> so I really had to ask myself. But um, again, people around you, as much as the mentors are very, very instrumental to all of this, it is yourself. Mm -hmm. You got to pick yourself up because um, um, your mentors can just help you as much. But without you yourself, you wanting to do this and you being passionate about this, it's never going to happen. So on my second um, package, given the situation that I was in right now, um, that's a different story. Um, I really thought that I would put in my package. There was one point I even thought that my first package was better, you know, but um, but this one, it's right. It's really me. It, this is really me in my second um, package. And it's just not awards, not just qualifications, but this is me. This is Madel, what's going on in my life and with me and why I really want this. And so um, when that happened and then I got selected for chief and then I was like, okay, thank you so much. That's a win, right? And then a few weeks after, the result came out and I I almost literally fell off the ground. I know it's a little dramatic, but it's true. And I was bawling and I was crying. And you know that. 
I, I couldn't believe it myself that it happened. And I was like, thank you, God. When it rains, it pours. And it's it's so amazing how um, it, it's I'm so I'm, I'm Catholic I'm, and I'm speaking for myself. And for me, I just said it's in God's time. And um, this is it. This is this is the time. And so um, going back to the 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 thing that I did um, when like second time around, really, it's just about going back, going back to the reason why and be motivated yourself and um, reflecting on the reasons and the purpose why you're really applying. Awesome. Thank you. You, you. you summarize basically one of my favorite authors, Simon Sinek, uh, who you start with your why, right? And I think if you are that person, and I, we had a question uh, on the comments of like, how long did you work on your personal statements? Uh, it's a process, right? It's not an overnight thing. Um, and for those of you that are watching, it, it's not just, um, this is not your typical sale of the quarter package. Not that I'm saying the sale of quarter packages are rushed, but it's, you know, most of them are very cookie cutter and have a certain style. This is you and uh, giving, actually telling Navy and the board members will notice this if you're giving them, you know, like, okay, this sounds like a copy and paste from somebody else's. This is why I don't recommend you asking for somebody else's application because the only thing that's different in that application is the personal statement. Everything else is the same. Same eval, different content. Same opnav instruction, different content. Same NAMS, different content. The only thing that's gonna be different is basically probably the folder that they set it in and that personal statement. So don't bother asking for one. In my opinion, this is there's other people that probably have a different opinion on that one. I'm in the school of thought of like, ask for guidance and ask for somebody to review it versus saying, hey, can I see your application? Because I want to compare mine. It's not going to do you any good because you're going to be tempted to just copy and paste that, that same application. And the, you know, the plagiarism effect of which most of us kind of tend to do when we're writing awards and packages, you might get turned that into and translate to, to your application. Um, I wanted to focus on one more question and I want to direct this to Senior Chief Andrade. Um, Senior, when we first started talking, you know, I already talked to you about like how you're an RS and you're kind of out of the medical community. And there's a lot of individuals, I'm actually very, um, you know, touched. There's a lot of non-HMs and non-medical folks and Marines actually in our group. How did you kind of fought off the insecurity feeling? Or was there any, first of all? And if there was, was how did you fight that off? How were you like, because I hear this a lot from non-HM applicants of like, I'm not a corpsman. I got to do like twice as much and everything else. What, how did you kind of combat that? And would you mind sharing that to the group? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. So I went back to why I'm doing this. So everything started for me 12 years ago. Uh, there was a Lieutenant uh, that started guiding me back there. He was back then he was an FCC. So he's also an RA chief. Um, that started 12 years ago. He told me that he was a selectee for the program. We sat down, we went over the program. So my preparation to be a selectee today didn't start last year or the year that I started my master's. Uh, my preparation for this started 12 years ago uh, when I got my associates, uh, my, uh, my bachelor's in uh, healthcare administration and now my master's. Um, so it's not something that I prepare for in in little time, the other thing that I have been doing for a while is uh, to be involved with uh, uh, the HCAs in different clinics, helping them out on different things. Uh, we, uh, I did an al analysis in uh, the clinic in Everett uh, with the commanding officer, uh, and uh, it was something to uh, my my strength. Right, you got to find a way that you can bring your strength into the health administration area and the MSC community. So my strength is financials and it's something that I've done with financials for a while. One of the things in my rate is the uh, use of vending machines. So how can a vending machine be useful in, in the medical work? Uh, if sailors have access to 
prescription medicine to um, in a, be a vending machine, which they already do, it can decrease costs and things like that. So that bringing my little piece of what my expertise is into my package, into my interviews, those are, are, are the things that one broke the ice for me to be able to speak the language that uh, the medical service court wants to hear. And second is the great mentorship that I got from yourself and uh, people that have been mentoring me, like uh, the lieutenant that has been mentoring me for 12 years. Uh, there is another uh, lieutenant that has been mentoring me for another eight, eight years. And it's not a process of one day to another for you to be confident in an interview. And uh, it's really it's really not luck. Uh, hard work is always going to pay off. Uh, it's, there is no shortcut to this. You need to put the work in. You need to do the master. You need to develop your leadership to the level that you are able to convey orders the right way. And and once you get interview and you get talked, you talk, you speak to senior people, they'll see that you're able to do that. So I think that is what broke my barrier from being a non-rated HM coming into the medical community, sir. That is so awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you shared that part that what is my strength right now as a non-HM and how can I bring that to the table? That's a very big takeaway from those of, for those of you that are watching that are non-HMs or that are trying to get to the specialty. And two, you said the word OJT, which I'm a big, big fan of. You put yourself out there. There's LinkedIn, Mill Suite, this Facebook page, you know, just putting yourself out there and we'll have a separate episode of like, how can you properly quote unquote, sell yourself, right? Um, but you exactly did that. And I like how, and last comment on the, what you said, uh, Senior Chief is, it's not luck. You are exactly correct. A lot of people have said of like, oh, first time up, that's so lucky. But there's a lot of hard work. You just mentioned that, right? It's 12 years in the making. And just like HM1 Shirley, she knew when she was an E4 and HM3, this is my calling. So it starts from there once you find out that this is what you want to do. It's not like, hmm, maybe I'll try MSCIPP this time kind of thing. Uh, and maybe certain individuals will end up, but there's still some hard work attached to that, right? It's not just an overnight thing like you mentioned for, you know, for the three of you are test uh, are like testament to this, that this is not an overnight application process. Yes, the appendix looks like, oh, email, I got that. I can print that from BOL. Nam, I can make copies of that. You know, it's, but there's other things associated with that, right? Your strengths, your leadership experience is a big part of that. So, and also harping on to what HM1 Shirley said earlier, it's like, uh, you, you yes, you are the best in your command, but you're competing with the other bests around the world. Right. And not, that's not an exaggeration. There are people out there in Japan right now, probably in special tours uh, and everything. But everybody has a strength that they can contribute. Right. I like an example of like uh, the FCC that you're talking about, Senior Chief Lieutenant Gonzalez. Um, you know, he's like, you know, what is and fire control? Right. Fire control. How can I? And now an HCA like there's what? But HCA is if you really understand the community that you're trying to apply to, there's the plants, operations, and medical intelligence, POMI, right? Part of that is the planning aspect, FC's plan. So, you know, that's one of the things that you kind of like, this is one of my strengths, right? And the operations part of it. How can, can you contribute to that? So great lessons learned. Hopefully for those of you that are watching, you've learned a lot from these three individuals. Before I let you go, because I know you have lives to go to and still enjoy and, you know, enjoy this time. I don't know about Chief Select because she's going through Caesar right now. But <laughs> <laughs> um, last few words, just quickly, briefly, if somebody's watching right now, they're either like, hey, I want to apply or, you know what, this is like my 18th, oh, not 18th, but eighth time, like as an exaggeration. What, what would be your advice to people watching right now, going through the process, about to go through the process? Uh, let's start with you, uh, Chief Select. Um, for me, what I can say is just put yourself out there. Um, actually, I would want to top on what Senior Chief mentioned earlier, since I'm also out of uh, the HM rate. Um, I kept saying this, but I really couldn't stress enough the importance and how instrumental the mentors are. Like, for example, with me as a GSE, 
um, going to Portsmouth Hospital and um, meeting with uh, mentors like LTJG Humphrey, she's very helpful, um, telling me and showing me the world of the realm of, um, of healthcare and stuff like that. So for those that are applying, um, speaking um, to like the un non HM as well, just put yourself out there and be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Because um, you be nobody's gonna be served to you in a silver platter, you got to work for it. And there's a lot of um, items in the package, not just about your um, like yourself. And what do you do with a community as well? What do you do to better yourself is actually part of that. So um, lastly, I would just keep on saying that be true to yourself and make sure that you know the reason why you're doing it and you can go from there. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Chief Select HM1. Mm -hmm. Any uh, last words for our audience? Absolutely. So um, one of the things I'm very big on is uh, just believing in yourself. I hear so many people uh, as HMs, we have very, very terrible advancement quotas. And I was in charge of EAP. So I would always tell people in my class, of course, you get a few salty people. And my goal after those five days, I wanted to change their mind. And what I would always say is, if there's all these people and the quota is 2%, who's to say that you're not great enough to be in the 2%? Who's to say that? Who's to say that it won't be you? Who's to say that you're not the person and that you don't deserve this? Of course, if you don't do anything and you don't prepare, then it's a thousand percent gonna be a no. But if you prepare yourself, you put your best foot forward, what, what can you be mad at? Exactly what Chief Select said, put yourself out there, one million percent. There are 25, 30 people that got selected in HCA and all the other different arenas. Oh, there's only this many quotas, this many quotas. But if you don't try, it's 100% a no. But if you try, you at least give a 50-50. It's going to be yes or no because you've given what you can. Um, the last thing that I want to leave, you never, you, we don't have any weaknesses. We only have opportunities for improvement. It's another thing that I tell my sailors, and I think it's very important to have a mindset of that. We are human, so we are definitely going to feel like, okay, we're going to have those moments where we have to sit back, rebuild, but never forget. And that was another thing Chief Slick said. You do have to believe in yourself. You do have to believe in yourself. I told everybody that I know that I was going to be MSC IPP healthcare administrator. Ever since 2015, I have said this. It has been my goal. So you can do whatever you set your mind to. And you can be the person that's speaking to people next year. But if you don't apply, it's 100% a no. So believe in yourself, work towards it. If you got a no this year, okay, I did this. What can I do differently? Talk to your mentors. Stay in contact with them. Don't be on the downswing too long. Pick yourself back up by your bootstraps and keep on pressing. Wow. That's like, one again, one of my favorite books, The Secret, like Law of Attraction, right? Put it out there and that's what's going to come back to you, right? If you're saying like, uh, it's a bad day, it's a bad day, it's not going to make it, might make it. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. However, if you keep saying like, Absolutely. I'm going to make it, this is the year, this is the year. Yep. Uh, that's the, that you're attracting that, right? So maybe cheesy for some, but I'm a big believer of that as well. Thanks, H1. I appreciate it. Senior Chief, last few words to no our problem. audience. Oh, great. Thank you, sir. Um, be ready to do things that not everybody is willing to do. So for one of my interviews that I had, uh, interview popped up in uh, San Diego and I flew to San Diego on short notice out of pocket for this interview. So be ready to do things like that. Um, be yourself. They don't try to be somebody else. You're not in a set of the quarter board. You're not in a set of the year board. You are there to uh, basically apply for a job. You are there to talk to a senior commander. So be respectful or a senior captain or even an admiral in some cases. 
be respectful, be direct, and, and tell them why and who you are, and why, can you, why you can be an asset. Uh, always speak from the heart. Uh, ask questions. Like when they open the floor to you in your interviews, and when you're talking to somebody that has been mentoring you, for example, the, the OIC at the clinic in Everett, they open the floor to you. They uh, tell you they have any questions. You better have a notebook ready with questions. Don't go in there. No, I'm good, sir. Have a sir, ma'am. Have a good day. That you 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 just wasted a mentorship opportunity by doing that. Uh, it is extremely important that you prepare. Um, if you're not prepared, it will show right away. You you but gotta be prepared to to speak each line item. That you gotta, that you would like to present to the interviewer or the person that is mentoring you. You need to be ready, and more importantly, get a mentor. Uh, get a mentor, um, a mentor who got you through this. Uh, not just get one, get multiple, because it, it's important to have multiple aspects on what got them commissioned. Not, not everybody's the same. Like not, not everybody has 12 years of their lives to basically devote to this program so they can get picked up. Uh, and have a strong punch first time up. You not everybody does that, so be ready to get out there, do things differently. If they tell you that, hey, I got your interview in Japan, think about it. You may need to go do that too, so you can get selected. Over. Yeah. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Hopefully the wardrobe is ready for this future Mustangs because I'm like, let me apply to another program right now, right? <laughs> it's, I feel like you're, the message tonight wasn't just for MSCIPP, it's for um, anything that you're trying to accomplish, whether that's an application in civilian sector, skill bridge program, whatever it is, I think that applies to that. But since this is the MSCIPP group, and for those of you that are watching, I am assuming that this you are watching this because you are trying to better yourself for the next application. These are your next future healthcare administrators um, who will potentially replace us that are about mm -hmm. to go out the door, right? So um, there's a lot of uh, individuals that are retiring, so they are replacing the next batch of healthcare administrators. And I'm so proud that you guys are entering the yeah, and gals are entering the wardroom with your fresh mindset, your passion. Um, all I ask, and I tell this to everyone that I mentor, and you know, is pay it forward, right? The MSC IPP selects always pay it forward, right? Um, people are like, don't you get burned out reviewing all these applications and packages? No, because it's the reason why I'm here because somebody took their time, hello, Mo Taylor, to review their my application, right? And that is, a, that's a privilege that you're like helping somebody out. So please don't forget that, my future HCA brothers and sisters. Um, for those of you that are watching, um, tune in, keep tuning in. We're going to have a lot of these type of episodes that we're going to talk to different specialties. And we might even invite specialty leaders. Tune into that, this page. So invite people that are interested in MSC IPP program. Again, thank you so much, Senior Chief Andrade, uh, HM1 Shirley, Chief Select Turner. Uh, we truly, truly appreciate your time. Uh, and yeah, that's it, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Our pleasure. Night, thank, you. thank you so much. Bye. Good night. Have a good night. Bye. Thanks, guys.